broadcasting from an undisclosed location, from a secret hunting spot known only to him, and the guy who told him about it, and possibly the guy who told the guy who told him. It's a show all about hunting in New Zealand and around the globe. This is The Hunting Show. Find The Hunting Show on Facebook and Twitter for up-to-date information on upcoming shows and topics. Coming to you from the Tihoi pub and we're at the conclusion of the Tihoi pig hunting competition and I'm joined with Jamie and Lance, we'll get to them in a minute. The question I have for you, is hunting dead in the cities? We're seeing more and more hunters and, and the industry expanding rurally and particularly in small towns but we're not seeing large hunting stores in the cities like we do in the United States. I would like your feedback on this sh- issue because we have a show coming up about this. Email me the info at thehuntingshow.co.nz or find us on Facebook. Now, with me I've got Jamie, who's the club president. How are you, Jamie? Yeah, good, thanks. Now, Jamie, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, Been president this year for the first time, taken over from uh, Brett Cairns. Been in the area for 11 years now. Yep. Currently just moved back to Rotorua, but still into the hunting and still in... Yeah. Present role in the club. Now, obviously, this is radio, but people and people can't see the amount of people that you've got here. But it was one of the best years ever for the competition. Yeah, no, it's been a good turnout. We've had uh, 130 entries last year. Yep, gained gain that up to 200 this year. That's phenomenal, is. isn't it? Yeah, no, it's been good. Yeah. Now, Jamie, how long have you been? You said you've been a president for around a year. Have you seen the the hunting club expand, or is it just sort of sitting where it's sitting? Uh, for the Open Comp itself, we've expanded this year, yep. which has been great. The club itself is pretty well, we've got our core group, mm. which chug, chugs along. And you're sitting here right at the base of the Poirua Forest. Do you think that's why you've got such a strong hunting club? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, Lance, you're the previous president, is that right? Yeah, I was the previ- previous pre- president for probably uh, three odd years, I suppose. Um, we've stood back now to let the younger ones take over. And, but we're still staying in the backyard there, keeping them keeping them honest, I say. We're just the Harrys now, so it's all pretty good. Now, Lance, uh, you were president for some time, weren't you? Yes, yeah, three years. Three yeah. years, well done. And uh, again, you've been surprised at the amount of people that have been in the competition this year. Unbelievable. It's, like, you know, it's, it's quite humbling, really. We started off a real small local club. Just like I said earlier on, when we're doing the prize giving and stuff, we, 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 we were, we call it Sunday school, I guess. It was a um, small group of hunters here. It was Sunday afternoon debrief. So then we um, just decided we'd start our own club. And we it's Tiwi Hunting and Fishing Social Club. We emphasise the social. Yeah. Uh, it's both young and old. Um, you know, women as well are all involved. Yep. And you're actually saying that, is it your daughter or daughter-in-law got one a, a decent size? Pretty much my... We're going to be my daughter-in-law, I'd like to think. But yeah, she, she got oh, a hasn't happened yet? It hasn't happened yet. Oh, but, uh, so shall we, um, are we meant yeah. to be talking about that oh, then? No, I well, well, hey, make these things happen, eh? <laughs> so, um, but no, she's um, she's pretty good, and they got out for the first time this weekend, and she went out, and um, yeah, she rides motocross and stuff like that, so this is an extension to what country people do, and she went out and shot a good stag, got yep. the third heaviest stag and had the best head. Gee. So she's over the moon, you know, and it's good to see these women out there doing it. And, and they and they realise they can do it and compete with the boys. It's interesting, this is a theme we see everywhere we go and almost every interview that we have, that particularly New Zealand woman hunters is growing. And a couple of weeks ago I interviewed a lady from an organisation called Queens of Camo. And this is an American women's hunters group. And it's one of, all of these women's hunters groups are really strong forces, particularly in social media. Um, but I, even as I look around here, I've seen that there's a non, number of young women particularly have competed, eh? Yeah, and, and the old, I guess I guess why they're sort of coming in, the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, that the, the girls realise they can do it as good. Um, and no one, no one compares them, you know, right. just out there doing it. So with regards to competition, are they on a level playing field or have they got their own divisions? On days like this, they're on an open playing field through the Tiwi Club, through our yearly comps yep. and stuff. We have got a women's divi- division, just the same as we have a juniors division. But on a day like this, they're on the open playing field. Now just back to you for a little second, uh, Jamie, and sorry we've got to turn the mic around. Uh, Jamie, how did you go this weekend? Uh, been a bit quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come uh, we on. got a good, got a good pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. But, um, yeah, 161 pound bull. Gee, yeah. So bit of a surprise, but <laughs> no, it was yeah. not too bad. And uh, 
tell me, uh, you, obviously you've been doing this for a little while. How does it feel being at the top of the game? Like before you were just competing uh, or being a member of the club and now uh, obviously you're overseeing everything. You have to do silly things like radio interviews. Yeah, bit of a challenge. Yeah. And, Not uh, a public speaker myself, but no, nah, it's been good. Yeah, you're doing Dealing all right. Dealing with um, well, a lot of different sponsors, obviously. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, nah, it's been a bit of pretty interesting at times. but yep. nah, And you've got good. some good sponsors too. Yep. Yeah, you want to mention them while you've got a chance? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, obviously, hunting and fishing, uh, WR Manklo Earthworks, Greenstone Fishing, Taupo Vet Centre, RD1. Yep. Uh, who else you've we got, got a big list in front of you there. Yeah. You better not forget any of them, mate. Nice. Uh, Sangyong, obviously, they've been awesome this year. Great. And hopefully grow with them next year. Uh, McDonald's Lime, Western Bay Ground Speed, Team Wheelands, uh, Taupo uh, Discount Tyres, DNJ Dagging, SJ Fieldpot Spreading, Skiven and Transport, McGregor Rigging, Second Time Used Furniture, Central Trappers, High Duty Plastics, Pure Construction Taupo, mm. Plato Sprayers, um, our secretary, Jim Creative, <laughs> yep. Hooked on Boars magazine. Yep. Now, we actually did an interview with Matt from Hooked on Boars the other week uh, about his uh, bow hunting and bits and pieces. Yep. He's a pretty knowledgeable sort of a cat. Do you have much to do? Have you, article going into Hooked on Boars? Uh, yep. We uh, well, obviously send out our... Yeah, your guff? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, our main advertising through Hooked on Boars. Yep. And... Uh, we're going to send out one in the next monthly magazine. Yeah, It looks like there's even going to be an article about the show on, in next month's magazine, so I might as well mention that while I'm here. So check out Hooked on Boars magazine. You can get it online, or you can also get it in hunting and fishing stores, and definitely you'll see a pretty picture of me. Well, it's not so pretty, but you'll definitely see a picture of me and a little bit about the Tihoi hunting competition. Now, you must have, all hunters have good stories. Tell me about one of your best hunting stories. That's a hard one. Well, tell me a good one. Put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I know Ian's got a couple. Why don't we get Ian yeah. to tell us a couple of his ones? Lance. Oh, Lance. Oh, geez, sorry. Yeah, Lance, tell us a bit about yours. Yeah, well, like you've got a lot of stories out there. If every every time you go for a hunt, it's a bit of a story. Um, you, know, you go out there, you start off with a lot of dogs, come home, got some wounded dogs, got some nice pork in the freezer. Sometimes you injured yourself, you know, we had, we had a lot of fun out there, um, but yeah, if, if, every day's a story, you know, you could write a book on a lot of the stories that every hunter's got, yep. obviously with a day like this, the longer the day, the bigger the story gets, mm. so, um, but yeah, and, and like, you know, like I said today, earlier on, there's, there's some hunters here today, they started out with five dogs at the start of the weekend, they're down to one dog now, mm. um, those dogs are all recovering, so uh, within a month, those dogs will be back out there doing it, you know, and it's just um, one of those things that you, you, you do. You know? mm. It's just, um, it's a passion for the sport, and it is a sport, but at the same time, you're filling your freezer as well. Mm. Um, if you're not filling your freezer, you're filling other people's freezer. Nothing goes to waste. Yep. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot of good stories, but yeah, just a rattle one off the top of my head's pretty hard to think <laughs> yeah, sorry, of. Sorry, I did so. put you on the spot there, but mm. one thing you did talk to me about before we, we went on air is you mentioned the history of the club. Yeah, well, the history of the club, we, we, like I said earlier on, we started off as a small social club. Uh, we've developed into to a quite a big club now nationwide. Mm. Uh, most of the members of the club, we all participate in, in different hunting comps right through New Zealand, and some of our boys have all been down south and whatnot as well. Uh, we believe in getting around and supporting the other clubs just like they come and support us, hence the number of people that we're here today. Mm. And, and it's, um, yeah, no, it's just a good all-round thing. And, and now, now we're at the stage, we've got a good, good solid core of members. And, and in the rural districts, you've got to have something like this to keep everyone yeah. together. You know? it's, it's about keeping everyone together. It's a family sport as well. You know? mm. Kids are out here this weekend. Um, it's a real big family family on traded social side of things. Mm. Now just while I think of it, thank you for the beer. That's alright, not a problem, that just goes goes with the chalk. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I definitely thank you very much for the beer. Mm. Now, tell us a little bit about some of the results this weekend. Well, it's been a huge success this weekend. We, we had 20, uh, sorry, 200 odd uh, entrants this weekend. There's 41 pigs in total were weighed in. 
We had nine deer in total weighed in. Number wise is probably back on last few years. Yep. Whether that was the weather was was uh, pretty wet earlier in the week, so a lot of those early hunters couldn't get out there, or whether it's just um, just the way the times are at the moment. You know, mm. um, we we do a, we do a lot of lot of hunting and stuff right throughout the year, obviously right through the winters and stuff. And uh, so the, perhaps perhaps we're getting the the pig population numbers down, right? Because uh, as we said earlier on at prize giving, the total amount of pork since the club's been going is sort of 148,000 pound of pork. Gee. So that's yep. 1,300, just under 1,400 pigs have been caught. That's all bulls over 50 pound. And, and, uh, and, and yeah, that's, that's just shy of the weight of the space shuttle, space shuttle Endeavour. So pretty <laughs> impressive when you start putting it together. I always like it when people bring out random facts like that. We're nearly at the Space Shuttle Endeavour. And... Uh, what about yourself? How did you go this weekend? Uh, well, once again, with these sort of comps, you're busy busy uh, getting things organised for these weekends, so time is precious. We did get out. Um, we didn't get anything great enough to weigh in, but we still yeah. got a lot of nice eating pork. Um, we kill sows as well. We're not just yeah. killing boars. We do kill sows. Every hunter kills sows. So um, we scalded them up and got a, got a freezer full of nice, nice pork for it. So oh, you're doing well. Now, what about some of the winners? Who can you rattle off some names? Oh, there's very one, one, well. The bloke who got the heaviest boar, he's um, he's just, he's still a young fellow. He'll always be a young fellow in my eyes because because <laughs> he'll because yeah, we're, we're 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 the old school. We, they call us the old school. Um, but he's he's been uh, hunting here from when he was a junior, and now they're getting up to the stage. They're out there doing it for themselves. Um, like I said, with the with the deer, you know, we got a, a new lass into the game this year. She's doing all right. Um, we got a lot of lot of new faces this year with mm. hunting. You know, they've they've joined the comp and stuff or the club, and it's just um, yeah, no, it's, it's just good to see see what's out there. You talk about new faces. There's a lot of guys out there that are not so much put off, but a little bit unsure about whether they should join local uh, hunting groups. Remember this. Uh, podcast actually goes nationally and internationally. Most uh, a number of our audience is in America, so we need to have a little bit of a chat to them in just a moment. But what would you say to someone that's had no hunting experience at all and thinks, well, maybe the way to get a little bit of hunt- hunting experience or to meet some people that are going to pass on some knowledge would be to join a local club? Oh, for sure. You've, you've, the, the best best advice I could ever give any young fellow or any person for that mind is to join a, a club of some sort, whether it's mm. a pig hunting club, bear stalking club, duck shooting, whatever, join them because it's about networking. You know, when you're networking, you get in the fold. And, and like back when we started here, there's probably a dozen younger ones here now, which are actually now running the club, would never have met each other if mm. it wasn't for the actual club itself. You know, so so they, meet, they meet new people and then their, their wives or partners and kids meet new people. Mm. So get out there and do it. It's networking and... and just it's in people's nature to drag someone along with them and take them out if they can see somebody keen. Yeah, absolutely. And even what we were talking about, or, or the issue that we're going to cover off in a future show, is that hunting in cities isn't growing. It's not a growing sport. We're not seeing, like in the USA, there's these giant hunting shops in the middle of cities. We're seeing it growing rurally in New Zealand. So if someone was, say, living in the, in the centre of Auckland, what should they do? Are they seeking out rural hunting clubs or, or going north, south? Just, just get out into the country and, and, and go and go and stop in some of these local taverns like where we are now. Yeah. You know, people drive past here wouldn't even know the place was here. But when you stop in here, we're not that bad. Mm. We're, we're not scary. You know, we're just people at the end of the day. Yeah, and, 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 and like, um, you know, I've, I've, I've got blokes that I've hunted with for 25, 30 years. And they all come from the city. Mm. Twenty of, you know, For the last 20 years, I've had eight mates that we duck shoot with. They're mm. all from the city. They come out and enjoy it, and they are just like us at the end of the day. You know. Now, have you ever hunted overseas? I've my big OE was down south. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's it, over a sea, sort yeah, of. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't very successful, but we did have an Aussie bloke hunting with us, which so that so that was just like going overseas, having an Aussie fella hunting with us. Mm. Yeah. So, um, but no, it was still a good trip away down there to see new country. It's one of the best things about when you're out there hunting is seeing the country. 
Mm. If there's a wilderness out there, the old saying, don't leave town until you've seen the country. Oh, absolutely. You know? Where I was getting to was that, is that uh, a couple of people we've interviewed, particularly the likes of Joe Byers, who's doing another show very soon, he talks, uh, he's hunted in New Zealand, he's from the United States, and he talks about how gnarly our bush is here and how, how much he loved going out, in the, uh, going out and actually doing it. Uh, where we, we take it for granted a little bit. One thing I love, I live in Taupo, so not very far from here, but I can leave home 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 4.30 I can be in the bush, 5 o'clock I can be on an animal, you know, 6.30, 7, 8 o'clock, I'm home again. Uh, I don't think many countries can enjoy such a, a relationship with, with, with the environment they live around. No, no, and you are dead right. You know, that's one thing about being a central plateau or, or in an area where you're hunting. And you, know, you mentioned that you can be out there within half an hour hunting deer. But two and a half hours from here, we can be out fishing and doing catching Absolutely. some of the best fish we can ever catch. You know? mm. um, so that's, that's one of the, the glories of being tied up with these clubs because people see us as a, as a pig and deer side of things. But we also do have a little, little network of fish, fishermen as well, both trout. Big game. Yeah. The mate sitting right here caught the first marlin last year in a 13 and a half foot <laughs> little tinny, basically, <laughs> in my house. So, but yet the day before he might have been out here hunting all that mm. morning. So that's the glory of it. Now, Lance, you must have a good hunting story of your own. Go back all those years, all the years you've been hunting. You must have a good one for me. I have got a real good hunting story, mate. But on, on, honestly, I could not say it on air. But honestly, I could not say it on air. Is it, real, it, was, is it that dodgy? Well, it was, it was just... Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't dodgy. It was clean. It was it was innocent. But just the way things perspired, it was, um, yeah, one of those things that, yeah, you had to be there to appreciate it, I guess. Uh, yeah, but let's... No, we've, we've, we've had... A, yeah, I don't know. Probably enough said. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. It, now, and, and, I, and I must say, it did, it did involve my wife as well. So, But I was carrying out the, one of the biggest balls I've ever caught, so... Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, I can, I can feel where this is going, so we might leave it there, mate. Mm. So, this weekend, you'd call it a success. Uh, there's a lot of people around here. Tell us a little bit, you've got juniors hunting, so what, what could they have won, or what did they take home with them? All, well, virtually all the juniors that entered went home with a prize. Great. Um, with, with the juniors, we, we don't sort of try to overdo the prizes for first, second and third, like that, because... Um, it's about participating, it's not about mm. what you actually win at the end of it, it's about being involved and doing it. Um, but yeah, we, we had some good little prizes for the juniors there earlier on, um, like so, all from hunting and fishing and stuff. Yeah, they make up little packs and stuff for the kids, little clothing packs. There's some awesome, awesome stuff out there for the kids now. And, uh, and you know, it's just neat to see, see the beam on their face when they go away with, with mm. whatever they've got. And there's something about, you know, I talk a lot about on the show that I'm, I'm involved with scouting because I'm actually a scout leader. And something about ch or youth understanding, first of all, the environment that, that serves them, but also understanding where food comes from, uh, you know, what happens. And a lot of kids, particularly from the cities, have no idea. They think that meat comes in a little packet and it yeah, turns it up. It comes from a supermarket is what you're absolutely. saying. Absolutely. And, and I've taken some kids out hunting and they've, it may be the only time they go hunting in their lives. Uh, but they say to me, you know, a few years later in a pub just like this, when they buy you a beer, that they had a new appreciation for where food comes from. Oh, oh for sure. And, 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 and that's a good thing about taking them out. You know, like if, if you just were sitting at home and just something up on their plate, they wouldn't touch it. But when you actually go out there and, 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 and kill this animal, I shouldn't say kill, but when you secure yeah, this you animal, hmm. and when you take them through the process about how it all gets there, and then, then they actually will sit there and eat it. But if you dish that up at home, they wouldn't eat yep. it. But you get them out in a hut or a tent or something like that, and you said earlier on you're you know, a scout leader. I, I used to be a scout years ago, and I think yep. that was some of the best grounding I had for being in the hills or bush or mm. whatever, because um, it taught you to appreciate what you've got out there. And, and sometimes you go out there and you don't take any meat because you rely on securing your kaimoana for the, for the, for the trip. You know, mm. so... So you've got to live off the land. Yeah, I've got a good story about that. If Ku Mates and I, is actually, we, we walked from the Waipunga side of the Napier Topal Road over to nearly Murupara, and we did the same thing, except for the first three days we didn't get anything. <laughs> so it ended up being rabbit, hare, and a couple of other things that we probably won't talk about here, but we ended up eating some terrible meat. But the point is, is we understood what was around us, and I think, look at all these young people here. It's, it's got to be a good grounding for them. Oh, definitely, and... and 
and, and that's the biggest problem with a lot of our youth now. Um, they've all got energy to burn. Mm. Uh, they run around the streets, get themselves into trouble. Run around here in the hills. By the end of the day, they just want to go and settle down and mm. and uh, quieten down, you know. And and when they realise what what you can actually do, that what, what they can actually do themselves out there is quite mm. impressive. These kids are not silly. Yeah, uh, they know how to look after themselves when they knuckle down and yeah, giving yeah. them confidence. Yeah. Now your kids also hunt. Uh, my kids now, yeah, but unfortunately, uh, one's 24 and one's 22. Yeah. But they did start <laughs> off here as juniors. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're, they're the same. They can go anywhere now, and and they'll be all right you know, on the food side of things. It's okay. Well, both Jamie and Lance, what do you see as the future for the hunting club? Continue to grow. I, I, our our club, like J- Jamie said earlier on, we've got a good nucleus here. Like all clubs, they're up and down, but mm. I think we'll stay pretty pretty steady and, th- and there'll be new people come in. Got a big wave of juniors coming through now, so I would say within two to three years, we'll see a big lift again. Mm. As far as these comps, we're creating a bit of a monster already, <laughs> I would say. It looks like a monster, yeah. yeah. Um, and and, I, and I, guess, I guess with when you're doing these things, as long as the hair on the back of your neck stands up every time you're involved in these things, you keep doing it, really, mm. at the end of the day. So now I can see it's pretty positive here. We've got a brilliant venue again, um, and, and that's what you need, you know, sort of this is our way station. Mm. And so I think, yeah, long-term future of the Tiwi Hunting and Fisting Social Club is pretty positive, I think. Now, if people want to find out a little bit more about your club, where can they find out? Yeah. Oh, Jamie, you can take that one. So where, where can they find out, mate? Uh, you can find us on... Uh, Facebook, Tioi Hunting and Fishing Social Club, or you got a website? No, uh, we don't actually have a website as yeah. yet. As in the progress. <laughs> uh, so soon they're going to be able to find out on a website. Soon enough, yeah. Yeah, it is in in the plannings, but not as yet. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. A, yeah, because that's actually often an issue for people, isn't it? They don't know, even know where to contact people or where to start. Yeah, so, it can be a problem at times. Yeah. And a lot of it is when we send out the flyers, we've got names, numbers, and emails to contact. But mm. And you're definitely a friendly bunch. I oh, found yeah. that when I rang up and said, hey, I want to do a radio show from out of the competition. I got the, oh, uh, holy crap. Yeah, all right, we'll sort something. When I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know how much. it's going to go. Yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. Nah, friendly bunch. So what I will do is I'll put a link to your Facebook page in the comment section of this podcast. All you need to do is scroll down. If you're listening on iHeartRadio, just push the expand button. iTunes, just scroll down lower. And Blog Talk Radio, which is where most of you find us, it opens up automatically. I'll also put some photos, uh, and I'm sure you're going to send me some photos of the competition so you can have a look and a bit of a Skype. And guys, thank you so much for doing the interview. Um, I am going to touch base with you again next year, see how it goes. And uh, just remember, if you want to like the show or be active with the show, all you need to do is like our Facebook page, send me emails, give me some feedback on what you think and what you'd like me to talk about. And Gerber will actually uh, have actually come on board and sponsored us with those great knives. And uh, you'll get your face up at the top of the Facebook page, Fan of the Month. All you have to do is be active. You don't have to win, enter, or do anything silly like that. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your time. Um, I know I've, I've cut into your beer drinking time, which is a bit rough. Nah, that's all good, mate. Thank and, you very much. And Lance, you've been you've been a machine, eh? I can see why they get you to MC everything around here. Yeah, I don't know why they do, because I never even used to like standing up in front of a classroom <laughs> of kids at school. I'd take the cane instead of speaking, but unfortunately, this is what we do. And, um, yeah, and it's been brilliant having you out here and getting involved in these radio stations, and and we're all out there to help people. Mm. Um, And it's been a huge success today. And once again, just a big, huge thanks to all those sponsors out there Mm. because they're the ones that make this happen. Yeah, and absolutely, isn't it great that sponsors get behind the, the sport that we all love or our sport? And I'm, I'm really lucky with the show. We've got some great sponsors, and, and you guys, again, that list is phenomenal. So it's a credit to the club. Yeah, well, thanks very much for that, but we you know, it's a credit to everybody. It's, it's a team effort, mm. and so, yeah, it's awesome to be part of it. And, guys, we've got some big announcements coming up about the show next week, so please tune in Monday, 5.30 p.m. Good hunting. Broadcasting from an undisclosed location. 
escaped from a secret hunting spot known only to him and the guy who told him about it and possibly the guy who told the guy who told him. It's a show all about hunting in New Zealand and around the globe. This is The Hunting Show. Find The Hunting Show on Facebook and Twitter for up-to-date information.